G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can generate your very own Harbor ID key using C Sharp with Visual Studio. So let's begin. So before I get started, I just want to quickly say that one of the reasons why you may want to generate a Harbor ID key is you followed my video on how to protect your software using your product ID. Um, but let's say your customer gets a virus in their computer and then they're going to reinstall the software that you've created. Well, it's already going to say it's been activated because theoretically it has been activated. So what you can do when, when the user activates that software is you can actually pull the Harbor ID key, add that to your database, and then when it tries to activate the software, it'll check to make sure that the Harbor IDs match up, and if they do, it'll allow the activation. If they don't, then that can mean other two things. Number one, they've changed a piece of Harbor in their computer, so theoretically it is technically a different computer because they've changed a component. Or number two, they've tried to give their software, your software, to one of their friends or co-workers or whatever, and they've tried to install it on their computer, but because the hardware IDs don't match up, uh, it's not going to uh, allow it to activate. So let's begin. So what we're going to do when we get started is we're just going to go over here top left hand corner and go to project and we're going to go to add class. Once that's popped up I'm just going to call this one hardwareid.cs. Beautiful. Now that we've got that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a private static async task And that task is going to return a string. And I'll just call it return hardware ID. Just like that. Beautiful. Now, if you guys have seen my video on encrypting um, passwords and stuff like that, we're also going to go down this path for encrypting stuff because some people um, might get a bit, you know, iffy about you know pulling serial numbers from say the motherboard or you know whatnot. They might get a bit iffy about that. Even though we're not going to pull the exact serial key number, we're only going to pull you know part of it. Um, they may get a bit funny about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to encrypt the original Harbor ID into a you know encrypted Harbor ID. That way it's different from the original. So in order to do that, we're going to get some bytes, a byte array more so. Just call it bytes. We've got another byte array, and this will be our hash bytes. And we'll also get a string data. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now quickly is I'm just going to show you um, a feature that Windows has got that a lot of uh, many users don't really know kind of exists. It's called WMI, and this is like an amazing tool. It allows you to like pull information from just about anywhere on the computer. You know, you can pull serial numbers from the motherboard, the RAM. You can you know check the status of hardware. So you know, e.g., you know, smart on a hard drive and all that sort of stuff. You can check absolutely anything. It's really cool. You know, all the way down to you could even make a program that you know on a computer uh, you might not have a hard drive light activity, um, but you can pull data from WMI to know if that hard, hard drive is you know, currently being you know, used or not. So it's just like a pull on top of being used or isn't being used. It's really, really cool. So in order to access that, press the Windows key and R and type in WBEM test. And this thing here is gonna pop up. It's really, really cool. So simply as press connect, press connect again, and then we're good to go. So like I said, you can pull information from absolutely anywhere, all the way down to the CPU, you know, who made the CPU, what sort of CPU it is, what sort of, you know, megahertz the CPU is processing and all, all that sort of stuff, it's really, really cool. And one of the easiest ways to sort of access information is by query. Now you can of course click on these other buttons here, you know, like enum instances and stuff, and you know, go down the long list, which it's incredibly long. Um, but I'm just gonna go today just to query, just to make things a bit quicker. And I'm simply just gonna run in this SQL command, it's so cool, and, uh, select anything from the win32 underscore processor okay so I'm selecting anything I could probably select you know the top one um, processor because you gotta remember some servers have got like say 10 processors you know so you can you know get information for every single of those processors but you know most people at home I guess are just gonna have one processor if you've got two that's awesome this will work with that as well but for this video we're just gonna you know pull data from one processor so I'm gonna click apply and as you can see, it's found one processor because, you know, I'm poor. I can only afford one processor. If I double click on it and go to show MOF, I can get information about it. So a lot of this, as you can see there, you know, to be filled in by the OEM, OEM being Intel. Um, but, you know, you can get information from, you know, the level, the maximum core clock. So this is a, um, a 6500 processor. Um, it's got a max speed of 3.2 when you can see that so I thought it was more than that actually it was 3.6 with turbo but nevertheless you can get information from there now the information that we want to pull to help create our harbor ID is this one here it's called processing ID so there's our processor sorry processor ID each processor should have a processor ID okay we're gonna pull the this number into our program but we're going to then only use um, maybe four or five numbers or sorry, um, you know, characters or numbers, whatever they may be, 
and then we're going to merge a couple others. So we're going to merge one from, say, the processor. Perhaps we'll do the BIOS version. Um, we may even do, you know, the motherboard and things like that. I mean, it really just depends on what path you go down to. Um, perhaps we'll just do the hard drive itself. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can sort of pull information from anywhere. So it's sort of what suits you and your needs. So for today's video, we're just going to get the processor ID. Um, we'll get the BIOS as well, why not? And then we'll get the disk drive as well. You can also do RAM, but I mean, RAM is something that a user can change quite easily. Um, so I wouldn't recommend you do that just in case, you know, they upgrade the computer from four gig to eight gig and then it's like, well, hey, I've got to activate my software because I think it's on a different computer. Things like the hard drive, they change the hard drive well. I mean, that's a pretty significant thing to do. Um, you know, even if they were to clone it, it would still pull a different number. So, I mean, just see what happens and see what suits, best suits your client's needs. Okay, so enough talking. Let's see how we can access this WMI tool within, Win, um, within our C Sharp. So what I'll do first, I'm just gonna run a task, okay, because I don't know how long this is gonna take and I wanna make sure that no threads get blocked whilst pulling numbers. I mean, they might have a really slow computer and the, you know, the task might not complete. So the task.run, I will do a lambda expression, I think it's called, just like that. And here's our task, equals new task. No, not new task, just task, perfect. Okay, so now that I've got my task done, what I need to do now is I need to access the WMI um, class library. So in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to go up here to project and go to references and go to search and go to man. And just there it says system management. So I'm gonna click on that one there and I'm gonna press okay. This will give us access to the WMI library. And now I can simply type in system.management. Beautiful. So within my task, like I said before, um, well, I might not, I don't know. Um, I'm doing a task because they might have, like, say, a Pentium 4 or a Pentium 3 if you want to go back that far, even though I don't think WMI was supported, you know, 95 days. Um, I'm going to run a task because I don't want the thread to be blocked with by other things that might be happening in the background for you guys. So by doing a task, we can ensure that the task is completed. So in order to access the WMI, we type in management, object, searcher. There it is. There it is. And I'll just call this one CPU because we're going to be searching for CPU information. It's going to equal new management object searcher. And then within here, we can run our query. So the query is what we wrote before, which was select anything from oops, win32 underscore processor. Just like that. And with this object searcher, we want to add this to a collection. So we we'll go to management object collection. And I'll just call this CPU underscore collection equals CPU dot get beautiful so that'll get all of the cpus even though i've only got one <laughs> and it'll put it into this management object collection which are, which is just the cpu collection in this situation and then with that being said i can now say for each management object and i'll just call it obg in cpu underscore collection i'm going to now put these to my string builder so i'll go sb dot append and we'll go obg and now this is the part where a lot of people get confused like well how am i supposed to get that particular um you know property which was i think it was called processor id or you know anything for that matter so if we switch back to here we can see we've got properties and if we scroll down you know you can start to see they've got information you see your device id even you've got you know data with um you know all sorts of stuff the family if we go down, we should be able to find processor ID. So that's what we want to pull. So the property name that we want to get the information from is called processor ID. So if you want to get it from something else, you know, for example, or, you know, revision, then you can just go there on the processor type, then type in processor type. We're getting processor um, ID. So use our square brackets and simply type in processor ID, just like that, or exactly how it's spelled. So how is it exactly spelled? Yep, so capital I. Processor, yep, that looks good. And we're gonna put it to a string because it could be, you know, it could be a really large integer or something like that if you're gonna pull, you know, how many bytes exactly your hard drive's got free or things like that. So we'll put it to a string. And now because we only wanna get, you know, maybe four or five characters of that, we can then say dot substring. This will allow us to start where we wanna start the index. So I'll go from zero to, let's just go four, okay? And that will append that to our harbor ID. Now, if you want to be really, really fancy, you could, of course, then put spaces between each of these keys. You know, say plus, you know, um, like a dash or something like that, just like that. 
and when I pull information from the BIOS and the hard drive, I mean, it'll look all nice and neat, but it really won't make a difference in the end anyways because we are just going to, you know, hash and hash um, or encrypt this string anyway, so I won't worry about that for now. But just an idea for you guys, you can certainly do that if you don't want to go down the um, hashing path for your users. So this is pretty much it to get started. Um, what I can simply do now, rather than have myself, you know, type out, you know, three different um, versions of this, what I'll do is I'll just simply copy and paste, and then we'll do it again for the next one, okay? So the next one that I want to get is information from the BIOS. So let's run that query again that we um, ran before, but instead of saying Win32 processor, let's say Win32 BIOS. Just like that. And I'll even copy this query, save me typing it out again, click apply, and as you can see, there's my BIOS information. So um, I'm not really too sure if this motherboard does have my um, my serial number attached to it, but it will certainly have a BIOS version. Okay, so I want to get the BIOS version. So it's just down there, right there. There's a BIOS version. Now we can see there are there's a few different things there. Number one is it's not exactly um, just digits. Or characters for that matter it's actually both so you could certainly run a regex um, that were actually just getting numbers only if you really wanted to but like I said just before we are just gonna you know encrypt the string in the, the day anyways so it won't really matter what it is as long as it, as long as it has something there so let's close out of that and then we know we want to get the version okay so let's say management object and we'll just call it BIOS and select anything from win32 BIOS this will now be called the BIOS collection Okay, and right there, I'm gonna get it from the BIOS. And now, all I've got to do is type in version. And that will then append um, the BIOS version number to our string builder. And it calls that. And I've done it on the wrong one. Nevertheless, I can just call one. Okay, so now for the third one, um, I want to get information now from the disk drive or the hard drive. So let's run that query again and see what we get. So we'll go hit a query and I'll go wind underscore 32. Just type in disk drive, I believe it is. Now I could have more than one hard drive, which I do. You can see right there that it's found two hard drives. Okay. So we'll just get information from the main one, which I believe would just be zero. You'd think that, wouldn't you? I don't know why I would have one there as the first one. But no, that's actually um, my. Oh no, that's my main one cool all right so let's get the what we're we going to get we'll get the signature now the signature i believe in this stage is pretty much like a serial number so i mean there is a serial number there but i'll just go for signature perhaps the hard drive won't have a serial number attached with it but it certainly should have a signature um so let's go to show mof anyways to see what sort of information we could possibly pull so you can see we've got firmware version um We've got, what have we got? We've got the number of petitions that it has. We've got the signature, we've got the serial number. Um, we've got the status of it, so smart. And we've also got the size of it. So back before when I said that you should always convert these to a string, especially if you're gonna append it to a string builder anyways, if I go to size, you can see it's a UN64, and that's like a really big, 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 big number, you know? So definitely put it to a string so it doesn't use up so much memory or resources within your computer. Um, what should I get? I could probably get the signature or the serial number. I mean, it really matters what you want to do. Um, perhaps I'll just go with signature for now. And, um, you know, you guys can obviously pick what works for you. So, what I'll do here is this is the hard drive. So, I'm going to select anything from Win, uh, select anything from Win32 underscore disk drive. And this will now be called the hard drive collection. And I'm going to get it from the hard drive, just there, the searcher. And then so for each object in HDD collection, we're just going to go ahead and get the signature. But you could certainly, like I said, you could certainly go ahead and you could get the serial number. But, you know, just in case the hard drive has a serial number attached to it, perhaps signature is better. I don't know. Highly unlikely these days that a hard drive won't have a um, serial number attached to it just for, like, warranty purposes and all that sort of good stuff. But, I mean, you just never know. All right, so there's pretty much the code there to get information from three of those hardware IDs. So we've got all three of those pieces of hardware. So we've got the processor ID, we've got the disk drive signature ID, and we've also got the BIOS version number. So once we've done that task, what I want to do 
is I'm just going to go underneath our elaborate expression or our task and I'll just write here task.wait all and the one that I want to wait for is the task. So we're going to wait until this task is completed which is what we're telling it to do and then once we've done that we'll go bytes equals system.set.include.utf8 Dot get the bytes and we want to get the bytes from the serial um, the string builder so sb to string okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to get hash points so this is ex pretty much exactly the same as when we're hashing and sorting a password um, or encrypting it for that matter and we're system dot security cryptography pardon and then sha256 and then we'll create and then we want to compute the hash and that's coming from the bytes. Beautiful. And now we want to return it because we are returning a task and we're telling it to return it as a string. So we'll say here, return await task from results. And we'll convert the results, convert to base string 64. So it's you know kind of readable, it's not just gonna say byte array, and we'll say hash bytes because that's what we want to print in the day. And right now, I can make this string as long as I want. So then you might have, like, say, you know, three different hard drives um, within the computer. You may have, um, you know, you could have 10 processes. So I only want to get the string to be as big as I want it to be. So in this case, I'm going to say substring, and I want it just to be the length of 25. I don't want it to be any bigger than 25 characters, if, if need be. Now, with that being said, I've just that's just quickly reminded me because some users may have one processor or they may have ten processors. What I'm going to do is instead of leaping through each of those processors that the you know end user could potentially have, I'm just going to break out of the loop after the first um, loop. So I'm going to do that for each of those ones. That way, I can ensure that I'm only going to get you know one hard drive serial number because let's say they they do have two hard drives, but um, it might just be the C drive and the E drive, but they may replace the E drive with another drive, so theoretically it's, it is still the same computer because it is still the same C drive, um, but they've just replaced their you know, extra storage and then so they shouldn't have to re reactivate the software just because of that. So I'm going to do a break out of the first loop and as well for BIOS, perhaps there'll be a backup BIOS or something like that with a different version number, I don't know. This will also help make the string a bit a lot less, even though I'm doing sub, um, substring 25, it'll make it be a little, a little bit more shorter as well. So that's pretty much it to get started with our return hover ID. Now because this is private, I won't be able to access it from my program when just here. So if I just say, you know, hover ID, um, hardware ID equals, you know, I, I can't do anything with it because it's a private sub, so for string hardware ID, number ID, I can't access anything, you see, because I've got it on private and it's in a different class. So what I'll do is I'll just create a public static string and I'll just call it get hardware um, ID and what we're going to do is we'll return the hardware ID, the results, because we are pulling the information from results, which I've told it to do right here, just there. Awesome. So. There we go, we've now got access to Harbor ID, and that's it. So now if I just go console, write line, Harbor ID, and I'll just tell it to read the key so the program can stop whilst I am debugging. If I press F5, and there we go, there's my special Harbor ID. So each person's Harbor ID is going to be different because it's highly unlikely that you've got the same serial number or same um, signature and processor and BIOS version as the guy next door, you know, or even in that country. So everyone should be unique, not to mention we're also encrypting that original string anyways, so it should always be unique in 99.999993% of the time. So there you go guys, so this is a quick video. I don't know if it was quick, but there's just a video, I guess, on how you can create a Harbor ID. Sorry if it went for a little bit too long, but there was a lot of information to get through. Um, if you have any questions, do leave a comment down below. And like always, thumbs the videos up if you know this video helped you, and I'll see you in the next one.